always support the underdog. Whether it's politics, sports, or even the movies, underdogs always pull through. They beat the most overwhelming odds to challenge the bigger power. For them, spirit matters more than strength. And I'm telling you all of this because what is happening in the Indo-Pacific is a story like this. It is home to dozens of small islands. They do not have standing armies. They do not have state-of-the-art weapons. But what they lack in strength, they make up for in spirit. One such spirited island is Samoa. Here it is on the map. Samoa is home to around 200,000 people. Their island is 2,800 square kilometers in size. It's a small, self-sufficient country. But its location has attracted the big regional powers, including China. China wants to convert these islands into its outposts. Step one was checkbook diplomacy. China is Samoa's single largest creditor. It accounts for 40% of their debt. That's $160 million. Step two was building strategic assets. And for this, they courted Samoa's long-serving prime minister, Tuilipa Malia Legoai. This is a man who once said that Pacific countries only had themselves to blame for China's debt trap. So he was more than happy to welcome the Chinese. And under his leadership, Beijing bagged a $100 million port project in Samoa. China was all set to conduct a feasibility study for this port, but that's when the pandemic struck. So China had to wait for the borders to reopen. Call it what you want, karma or coincidence. But in the end, China's own virus from Wuhan tripped them, tripped them up in Samoa. The port project was never popular to begin with. And with Samoa's economy taking a beating last year, public opinion shifted. And the shift was clearly seen in the parliamentary elections that were held in April. So the pro-China prime minister was ousted. And he has been replaced by opposition leader Fiame Naomi Matafa. She's expected to take charge on Friday. Samoa's new leader is a fighter. She is the first woman to hold this office. She comes from Samoan political royalty. Her father was the country's first prime minister and she's going to need all this pedigree for the path that she's on. Because Matafa has decided to take on the Chinese. She has promised to cancel the Newport project. Let me quote from what she said in a recent interview. Samoa is a small country. Our seaports and airports cater to, to our needs. It's very difficult to imagine that we would need the scale that's being proposed under this particular project when there are more pressing projects that the government needs to give priority to. So Samoa's new prime minister has seen through China's designs. Beijing is an expert at convincing countries to build things that they do not really need. Seaports, airports, roads, trading terminals, most of these are just debt instruments. And once the payments are due, China will swoop in to take ownership. To avoid this, Samoa is looking to diversify its relationship. The new prime minister is promising to build better relations with the United States to counterbalance China. Samoa is not alone in standing up to Beijing. Last month, we told you about Palau, another tiny Pacific island. Their president says he does not even answer phone calls from Beijing. More countries need to take the stand, but they're scared of a reprisal from China. And this is where the democratic alliance comes in. You see, Pacific islands drifted closer to China because they had no option. To counter this influence, the likes of the US, the UK, India, Australia, they must all do what China is doing without the debt trap. The underdogs are willing to fight. All they need is some good crowd support. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.